Hello, everyone. This is uh, Shad Reis from CVI 2023. I'm really privileged to be with Dr. Human Khalili, who is an uh, interventional and structural interventionist uh, from uh, Memorial Health. How are you doing? Good. Very Thanks good. for being with us. Thank you for having me. We're going to talk today about an like, unfavorable topic, unfortunately, but yes. it's an important topic. Yes. Coronary perforation. Yes. So uh, this is hopefully rarely happen. Yeah. When it happens, is a big disaster in a cath lab. Yeah. So this walk us through the classification and incidence and how to manage it. Yeah, so um, yeah, coronary perforation, unfortunately, we don't want to see it in the cath lab, but we, we do see it when we you know, naturally take over and do complex coronary cases. Um, but the important thing is to be aware of how to manage it and not to be um, having awareness of uh, what is the best strategy, what you should do first, second, third, and fourth, uh, so that way you have a good outcome for the patient. Um, so there are a lot of different algorithms, as, as you know, um, uh, Dr. Berlakis has beautiful algorithms laid out for management of coronary perforation. The first important thing, I think, for any coronary complication that you have or any complication that you have in the lab is all hands on deck. If you have partners out around, ask for your partners to come and help you out. Um, so and there are two major uh, kind of complications from perforation complications. One is a major uh, kind of main vessel complication, perforation rather, and one is end vessel uh, perforation. Um, I talked about uh, the other day about main vessel uh, perforation. The management strategy is slightly different between the two of them. From a main vessel uh, perforation standpoint, the first thing you want to do is have balloon tamponade. So as soon as you recognize that you have a main vessel uh, perforation, you put in a balloon and tamponade it and kind of get control of the situation. Um, you ask for a echocardiographer to come in, do an ultrasound, and check to see and make sure you don't have pericardial effusion, because if you do, that could lead to hemodynamic deterioration, and uh, then the patient could uh, potentially have a bad outcome. So you want to make sure there's no pericardial effusion. If there is, you may have to do a pericardial synthesis. Um, Typically, uh, have a balloon tamponade um, uh, for about five to 10 minutes in uh, patients, uh, depending on the clinical scenario. And after that, take the balloon down and reevaluate. A lot of times, depending on the perforation, a lot of times you can get a good tamponade of the vessel. And um, you can ask for the surgeon to also be in the, in the room just in case the patient has to go to surgery. It doesn't hurt. Uh, the other important also aspect of any perforation management is you do not want to reverse the anticoagulation. You reverse the anticoagulation with all the gear that you have in the coronary, you could then turn a perforation into a thrombosis of the entire vascular tree, in particular the vessels that are involved. And that would be a, even a worse outcome for a patient with the degree of ischemia that you may uh, be dealing with. Typically at that point, I reassess by angio. You reassess and see, have the patient on the table. You don't take the patient off the table immediately. It's like sealed and you're all good. You have to make sure that, the, um, that it doesn't open up again because it can easily open up again. Uh, one way of testing it is you can inject definitely contrast into the coronaries and check by echocardiography if there's still a pain um, kind of um, communication between the coronary and the pericardium. If there is uh, not great, I still wait about 10, 20 minutes and reevaluate. If it's all good, you're done. If it's not and you have perforation has opened up again, at that point, you have to really seriously consider uh, dealing with that with a cover stent. Uh, so very important when you take, um, uh, take in a challenge in coronary cases to make sure that you have all the equipment available to deal with potential complications, um, being coils for end vessel perfs and being uh, cover stents for main vessel uh, and perforations. And also familiar with the sizing and what's sheath size absolutely. compatible with. Yes, absolutely right. Uh, particularly if you only have graft master uh, cover stents available, obviously you need seven, eight French size sheets. Uh, but with papyrus now available, you have a lot more compatibility and a lot easier deliverability of the papyrus stent um, compared to graft master. But you have to be aware of what you have available, what you don't have available, so that if you do have a complication, uh, you're not scrambling to figure out what you, what, what you can kind of um, uh, uh, bring to the lab and, and, and help the patient. So, um, yeah, so if they still the perforation is opened up again, then at that point, I think uh, you'll probably obligate to go ahead and do a cover stent um, and cover stent of the, of the perforation. Size to the vessel size. Yeah. Size vessel size, ideally one to one, one to 1.1. 1 .1. And then reevaluate the perforation the same way you did before and make sure that you cover the, the, the side of perforation. And that is the other important aspect of perforation. You gotta identify and make sure you identify exactly where perforation is. Sometimes it, it can be difficult because there's a lot of staining to identify where exactly the source is. So you don't wanna misplace that cover stent in an area that is not the perf. So that is very important to use 
appropriate angi uh, angiographic projections to identify the source of the perforation so you can cover it and deal with it. Yeah, and sometimes the, the delivery of a graft master is not the best, especially yes. if you are a mid visal or in a mid circ kind of scutified ostium. Absolutely, that can be difficult and guideliner can be challenging because you're not going to fit in like a six French guideliner. Yeah. Uh, so that became hard. So the papyrus then really has helped with quite a bit uh, with those uh, scenarios. You can potentially fit it in, in a yeah. six French guideliner. Um, and if you have a six French guide, um, that also works with the, with the yeah. papyrus. One of the um, toughest uh, scenarios they may deal with is bifurcation. Um, and one of the cases I presented yesterday was a uh, case of osteal uh, LAD uh, perforation. And the uh, clinical dilemma in that was, if I put a cover stent, I would be covering the, the circumflex artery. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, at the time that I did this procedure, we did not have papyrus available, and GraphMaster was the only one available. Uh, but as we know, with papyrus now having only a single layer, uh, it is much easier um, to fenestrate the papyrus, and that way you can uh, rescue the side branch, and you don't have to deal with the consequence of closing up the side branch. Um, but uh, that, that is the nice thing, having, uh, having access to papyrus and having access to these fenestration techniques with a high tip load uh, wire. That could be a Absolutely. very lifesaver. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, this is very kind of... Uh, algorithmic approach, yes. thank you for sharing this, but uh, one of the highlights is, and it's board question for people preparing for the board, is one of the first thing they ask you, what do you do when it's balloon tamponade, it's the first thing, yes. and then echo to rule out recurrent fusion. But uh, one tip is very important practically not to reverse the Yes, not uh, to not reverse it. Mean because as, as you said, it you become a disaster. It become a disaster. Yeah. You can you can clot up the, the vessel, you can clot up the, and you also have a percario fusion can now can thrombose, thrombose. and that you cannot you uh, Tap tapping of that one. At all, yeah. Yes. And yeah, it would be challenging. Thank you so much, yeah. uh, Homan, for your time and for challenging cases presented, but also for walking us through the algorithm for managing perforation, watch these videos and others on the CVI YouTube channel. This is Shadi Reis from Austin. Thank you so much. Thank you very much.